It's a dewy morning. The sunshine glitters in the morning dew. The ground is muddy. The song of a few birds can be heard as it seems something is the song of a few birds can be heard as it seems something is cutting through this peaceful morning in the forest. The sound of wind being pierced by arrows flying quickly followed by them hitting their mark. The sound of someone who elegantly makes their way through the forest with swift steps and a calm breathing. They see their target, draw the bowstring back, take a breath and release. And as the arrow cuts the air, it strikes the mark once again. Not even waiting to confirm their hit, the archer already has disappeared once again. Suddenly, the creaking of a branch in the trees above, with a steadfast stance and determination in their eyes, they once again draw the bowstring back. And I would love for you to describe your character. You see a uh, blonde short hair, about five foot ten, tall human standing in the forest. His movements seem very slow but elegant, except his eyes. His eyes are jumping around, fixating the target, then takes the shot and dives again deep into the forest without destroying any of the plants on his way. You rush further through the forest, you um, dodge a few trees, you dart around looking for your next target, but you don't see it yet. It's weird. Your father changed the course. This is not what you prepared for. You thought this was a normal morning training, but this is usual for your father. He always surprises you. It's one of his prepare him to get faced with the inevitable. Suddenly, you see the red ribbon dangling off a branch high above you. What do you do? As I pull a new arrow out of my quiver, I go on one knee to steady myself, already fixating the target with my eyes. And then I pull the bowstring back, I shoot, already looking for my new target. And as your arrow hits the ribbon, pierces through it, you hear a creaking as if someone would, uh, as someone stepped on a branch behind you. And you hear the voice of your father. You need to watch your guard, kiddo. Your rear is still free for a strike. And you feel your father like with, with a wooden sword so you don't get hurt. Strike you from behind in the back, dropping you, even though you steadied your, uh, even though you steadied your stance dropping you from behind. You um, fall to the ground, you roll over and see the silhouette of your father, this big, bulky man with this very, very rugged beard and, and blonde, longer hair put back so it doesn't fall into his face with these big, muscly arms pulling you up again. And, stand, and standing you up and patting yourself, patting you on the shoulder. Well done, my kid. Surprised, I blink at him, a little bit startled. I did good without guard and a rear. Well, <clears throat> if you say so, it um, must be true. As you see that um, my character for a short time loses the tension just to tense up again, looking around the forest, not to um, remake the mistake my father just called out. <laughs> No, but you did well on the challenge I gave you. You rely a little bit too much on what you first think. You should expect the unexpected a little bit, my kid. Remember, in nature, most things don't play fair. You suddenly hear something with your razor-sharp ears. Not far from here, you hear the sound of a deer crying as if it's been hurt. My head just quickly jumps the direction the cry was coming from. A deer, it's hurt. Should we take a look? Your father is nodding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As I start to slowly and stealthily make my way across the forest, closing the distance between myself, location of the cry. You push uh, through some branches in the forest, you make your way through um, a few trees and uh, then walk onto this um, place, space between a few trees, where on the mossy ground a deer is lying on the ground, crying out to whoever might hear it. Uh, one of the legs a little twisted, your father right behind you. You can feel this very expectant look in your neck as if he would like for you to do this on your own. At first, I take a look around to make sure that there's no predator chasing this deer who would I interrupt and 
As soon as I'm confident there is no such predator, I make my way to the deer to examine its wounds. It has it hasn't been shot, so mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't hunted by humans. Oh, but its leg seems twisted, probably broken as I look around, but I see no trap, so maybe it happened naturally. I take a look at the leg to confirm whether it will heal shortly or if it's really broken. If it's broken, I guess we should take it out to shorten its pain. As I slowly turn with an questionable face to my father. Your father standing right behind you, looking at you and the deer, uh, kneels down next to you, next to the deer, and examines the leg himself. He, tra he traces it down to the hoof and says, My son, if you... My son, if you look here, you can see that it's probably just tripped over something. It shouldn't be broken. The leg, the leg isn't broken. It's just a little twisted. What do we do in this instance? as the protectors of this forest. Well, we if it's not broken, we should find a way to support the leg so the deer can move again, eat without further sustaining um, the leg and maybe then causing um, a bigger injury. Very good. So, what do you do? I get up, look around to look out for some fitting branches to collect and get them back to the deer and start supporting the leg binding it with string I brought myself. Yeah, you just um, tie a little bit around it, um, support the leg, probably like you would say two days of this deer having to endure this, um, the pain from this twisting, but nothing too major. You help the deer up and as soon as you do that, it basically hops away, scared into the deeper woods. You look after it, um, and soon it's gone, uh, disappearing into the green brown of the forest. As you look down through the deeper dark of the forest, it it's always weird. This dark forest, it's all it always feels like it's calling you, as if it's calling everyone. This certain feeling of calling is something you've experienced all your life. You know that you won't give in to it, never. But there is this compelling of just venturing out. You see your father turn with his back to you, just like you were in the beginning. He's looking up into the sky. As you trace his view, you hear this dull <laughs> You feel the wind shift around you. You see a few leaves flying through the air. You look up and see this giant, radiant white beam right in the city, shoot up into the sky, parting the clouds, as if someone was shooting a ray of sunlight back at the sun. You see your father's shaken face. You have never seen him lose that much composure, not even when staring down a pack of wolves. You hear him mutter under his breath, It can't be. 